Cheers and welcome to Bitter Reality Brewing. Yes, today we're going to convert a six gallon fur monster, very inexpensive fermenter, into a fermenting beast so that it supports glycol or like an ice chilling system with a pump, whichever works for you. But yeah, probably one of the least expensive conversions I've seen out there that I could do and one of the least expensive fermenters. So this is extremely cost effective if you're considering either doing an ice pump type chill or if you're looking to go straight into glycol, which of course your glycol system is gonna be extra. There's gonna be some extras here and there, but I'm gonna give you all the costs and I'm gonna show you how to convert it in two different ways. But one is personally, I feel is just a better way of doing it, but both work just fine. So let's jump right into this and come on, come on. Just for the time, just showing some appreciation. We got the like, does it say subscribed? If it doesn't say subscribed, come on. Oh, it does say subscribed. You're awesome, appreciate it. Definitely appreciate it. So let's go right into this. This runs for about 40 bucks and prices do vary sometimes, but this is about 40 bucks. It's a Fermonster. It does a great job. It's just a typical fermenter. You do need a bubbler. You do need a little number 10 bunghole, but yeah, it's a great system for 40 bucks. Now, you can ignore me on this and I'll explain why. You don't have to buy another lid. You can use this lid and I'll show you how to modify that. But I recommend you buy a solid lid. Yes, the O-ring is sold separately. So the lid's five bucks, the O-ring is three. That's $8 for a lid. Yes, I do think the O-ring should come with it, but you know you're gonna lose it and need a spare someday. So might as well just go ahead and get it. Then you're gonna need from Keglan, the temp, temp twister. This thing is a cooling coil. There are some custom systems out there that might be equal, but this thing to me is one of the best that you can get out there. It's awesome. And it comes with all the connectors, bolts, more O-rings. So that comes with your temp twister. Other item that you're gonna need is the Firmzilla Thermowell, right here comes with its own bolt, its own little quick disconnect. And there are certain ways, these do not get installed the same way. It's, they're opposite and there's a reason for it. And I'll explain that. That's 10 bucks, the thermal well, not a big deal. Then you're gonna need a Firmzilla. I don't know if it's specific to the all-rounder. Yeah, all-rounder jacket. The Firmzilla all-rounder jacket. Now, you don't have to get this, this will cost you 50 bucks, so this will set you back a bit. You could get whatever you want for insulating it, like a bunch of beach blankets, they would help. This thing is designed specifically for keeping the cold in and everything out. As you can see, it unzips. I mean, beautiful. It does have a thing to kind of close up the bottom a little, but it doesn't do a great job, but that's not a big deal. That's really easy to solve. So yeah, you're gonna need one of those for 50 bucks, or you're gonna have to come up with your own solution for that part. So if you wanna save the 50, that is a good chunk of change there because our total price, mm, time that, times three on that and you'll be close. Now, if you decide that you don't want to buy the solid lid and you wanna save the eight bucks, well, then you're gonna to have to turn around and spend five bucks. Yeah, you're gonna <laughs> just spend five instead of eight and have two different systems. Instead, you only have one system with a bunch of extra holes you may have to plug or do whatever you want, but this, it is a number 10 brew master stopper. And what it has, it has a big hole and a little hole. The little hole is for the thermal well. And you shove the thermal well through, might need a little lube, but you know, you can get it in there. Put it in the hole. And then on the other side, the big hole, that's for your bubbler. So you have your thermal well, which goes right up along the edge of your bubbler and that. So now you have these two items. The only thing you don't have is a temp twister set up. Now on the temp twister, kind of jumping ahead here, you could drill some holes. You do not want to drill them across from each other. Not like this. We'll go into that and I'll explain why it'll make life so much easier. Other item you'll need, which is $7 if you don't have one, is a pipe cutter, which I know is right here somewhere. A little cheap pipe cutter. This thing was seven bucks on more beer. I'm like, dude, that's cheap. That's cheaper than my local hardware store. So yeah, a little tiny pipe cutter, seven bucks. Now, if I go to Harbor Freight, it's probably five bucks. I didn't think about that, but for Home Depot, Lowe's, things like that, 
much more expensive. I mean, they've kind of got like a, a fee just for walking in the door. But other item is you're gonna need a step drill. It's a drill bit like this. Looks like kind of a cross between a drill bit and the pyramids. That's something else you're gonna need. You may need one to drill little pilot holes. I didn't really need to. I just kind of dug a little marking and then stuck it in and drilled right in and had no problem. I mean, you're talking thin piece of plastic. It's not that hard. It's not like drilling into stainless steel. So don't worry about it too much. You're also gonna need two 9.5 millimeter elbow duotites. It's these little guys, okay? And they're gonna go up here, as you can see over here. It's gonna make life a lot easier for you too. So you're at $176 total. So for $176, you can have an entire fermentation setup like this. Now I know the bottom, the bottom is an issue. And if you're setting it on cold concrete, that's not gonna do real well for insulation. So you need one of two things, or you can think of something else. You can get your, you know, friend's jacket that you don't talk to anymore and he left it behind, I don't know. If you have these, like from a gym, that you don't use. Yeah, we know you don't use that, Jim. Come on, yeah. these floor mats, they work great. Or a beach towel, fold it a couple layers over so it's nice and thick, kind of insulating. You don't want to do one or two layers. It's gonna be like four good solid layers. So that way it can absorb any kind of moisture and, because it will sweat, especially if you're in Florida or anywhere in the Southeast or anywhere it's hot. Um, yeah, you're going to need something to kind of keep the, the cold in and maybe even absorb some of the moisture so I've done it recently where I did not have towels. I used just the mats. I'm gonna to put towels underneath next time because I did have quite a bit of condensation buildup. So you gotta take that into account. Other items you're gonna need. You're gonna need a glycol system. If not, you're gonna need a good cooler with a pump and you're gonna be swapping out like frozen water bottles or whatever. I haven't tried that. Some people are very successful with that. If you're doing ales, not a problem. If you're doing lagers, it's a little more difficult especially if the room is kind of warm or you're doing it in a garage where you have a lot of heat. So let's get right into what you're gonna need. So I'm gonna give you the two ways of modifying it. You can either do the bunghole, which is five bucks, it's a stopper, okay? Take that stopper, you have your thermo well, which you no longer need this piece that comes with the thermo well if you're using the stopper and you have your bubbler. I did not count the cost of a bubbler. I'm assuming if you're getting to this level, you have a bubbler. So we're gonna let that go. Now, the reason you don't wanna drill the holes across from each other is that this thing is not wide enough to go across and connect properly. You wanna push it to one side or the other. And the reason you wanna push it to one side or the other is so that these two holes stay Parallel, perfectly parallel. If they come apart or come together a little bit, they're kind of doing a little bit of an angle. And when they do an angle, and you try to slide them both into these things, the little dual tight type connectors, oh, you're talking nightmare. It's like, yeah, you get one in and won't, can't get the other one in. You get the other one in, you can't get this one in. If they're staying perfectly parallel, they'll slide right in, no problems. Other item is that when you put this in here, these pieces are gonna stick way out. So you're gonna to have to cut them to size, okay? That's where the pipe cutter comes in. You simply clamp it on, tighten it down where you want it, and you give it a twist. Come around like two or three times, tighten it down a little more, spin it around two or three more times, tighten it down, you just keep doing it. And eventually it'll go snap and it'll come right off. A little sandpaper if it's sharp, mine are barely sharp, I'm not worried. They really are not that bad, so I'm not gonna worry. Now, you've decided, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and go all the way so I can swap it between the two type of systems and not have to wash this every time for no reason at all or try to find something to plug the holes. So, other item I forgot. I totally forgot this thing. I don't have it in the costs. Is, you know, I'll find a picture and I'll show you here on this other camera, but it is a little tiny, like, seal little plug and you don't need that if you're doing this way but if you do it with a solid lid you're going to need this and you can buy a few of these off of amazon in a little packet if you want or there's probably somewhere somebody will sell you one for probably more than it's worth but i'll put that everything's going to be in the links we'll leave it in the links don't worry about it so i take this 
and I want to drill these holes. Well, there is a lip, and I don't know if you can see it on this camera, but there's a lip in here, and that lip sticks up, and it can be a pain in the butt. So what you want to do is you want to drill these two holes first for your fermenter, or you can do these two first, it really doesn't matter. But these two up here have to be at 20 millimeters. How do you know it's 20 millimeters? This little thing has markings inside. You go, this one happens to go up to, I think it's 22 or 24, but yeah. And when you cut, take it, flip it over on your drill and cut the other way so it's nice and rounded out. So that's a 22, no, I'm sorry, 20, 20 millimeters. And then these little holes, they have to be at 12 millimeters. So 12 mil millimeters is gonna be for your thermal well and for your little, I don't know what you wanna call that thing. It's like a little, it's a grommet. It's a grommet, that's what you call it. I couldn't remember the name for it. So when you go to put all this in, let's do the grommet first, cause it's a little bit of a pain in the neck and I'll jump ahead after I get it shoved in here. Cause literally you gotta shove it in. It's all rubber. Okay, trick with that grommet. If you got a little bit of a fingernail, you can pop the edges all the way around and it should lay nice and smooth. If you can't, you can get a little tiny flathead screwdriver and just go around it. You just want those two lips on the outside for underneath and the outside on the top to be there. And that is for your bubbler. So right there, got my bubbler. Now we're gonna do the thermal well. The thermal well, I made my hole pretty tight, so I have to screw mine in. And there is a rubber grommet or a O-ring, really it's an O-ring, sorry, not a grommet, that's a grommet. You tighten it down just so it's nice and snug. You're not Hercules here, you don't need to get out the torque wrench. Yeah, just everything needs to be hand tightened. I will say to take all this stuff and wash it really, really good before you ferment in it. But once you're done, put it together, you will have to take it apart from time to time to clean it really well. I would say preferably every fermentation, but every other is okay if you're washing really, really good around it. Now, if you had some sort of big bubble over or you're, something happened with your fermentation went crazy, clean it. So that's it. It's sticking up. The plastic is sticking up and the bolt is underneath and the threads are there, which I really don't like down in my fermentation area. And that O-ring loves to stick up, but you can push it down and you wanna make sure it seals nice. Now, for the coil, it's a little different. This is up here so you can move that thermal well up and down and slide it where you want. And when you cut it, leave it kind of tall because that way you can push it down if you're doing a small batch or you can bring it up higher and put it somewhere. You want it in the middle. You really want it somewhere near the middle. In the comments, correct me if you think it needs to be at the top for ales and at the very bottom for loggers. I've been thinking about that. I'm a little OCD, but in the middle is a good place from everything I've ever read. And that's what I'm going with because I don't think I've ever seen anybody recommend anything but the middle. So the middle of whatever it is, if it's here, I wanna go somewhere in here. If it's a small batch, I wanna push it down. And I have that ability because I didn't cut too much off. You can always cut more. Remember that when you're cutting it. So now I take these and these do not go up. These go down. And the reason being, they have O-rings too. I wanna make sure those O-rings are in there. And this is another reason why I cut the holes the way I did. So when I cut these holes, and I'll show you on this camera, I made sure I wasn't cutting into that and that little lip wasn't blocking this from going all the way down and being secure. So I'm good. I'm right at the very edge, like fraction of a millimeter there. And it looks great. I take the other one, I do the same thing. I push it in. Okay, now that I have these in here, I flip it over and these, the bolts, go on the top instead of the bottom. Yeah. I say you don't need a wrench, but you might need a second hand. There we go. So I'm gonna tighten that on there and just hand tighten it. I mean, snug it up nice, but hand tighten. There's little O-rings in there and if everything's clean, you should be good. So now, tightening this up. We are pretty much done with the lid. Yeah, I know, you're like, that's it? That's all I have to do? Yeah, the hardest part is ordering all the stuff. So, you know, let your wife order it. If you're a guy, if you're a lady, then you know, you can order it. But 
most women like to go shopping. They might not be shopping for something they want, but maybe they get a little kick out of it. I don't know. Just trying to think of something there. So now we take this, and this is the hardest part because if you have them, and this one I think I cut, this one I cut a little closer, this one I cut a little further apart. If they're perfectly parallel, it should slide right on. And this one that's kind of flanged or whatever, it's not straight up and down, it's a pain in the butt because it likes to stretch downward instead of going straight up. And there they go. I feel them moving. Except this one always takes its time because like I said, it's kind of got like a flange to it instead of just going straight up and down. And there we go. So I'm gonna push it and I have to keep pulling this one. And it, it, it's not easy. I mean, you can get them a little wet if you want or make it a little easier, just act like a lubrication. A little star sand if you have to. And mm, right about there, we're, we're pretty good there. Now then you take your thermal well, make sure the opening is at the top and slide it on in. For some reason that thing looks like it's at an angle and I'm not sure, I'm not sure why. There we go, let's try that. Okay, other thing I would recommend, especially if you do this on something that has some kind of pressure, is you can get those little clips and put them in for the duotype type connections where you lift this up and you put the clip and that'll keep it from moving. I like this to be able to be moved and when I pull it up a little bit and if you wanna pull it and tug on that, it'll seal really well. It's the same thing with this. You can push these down, but if you go to pull them out and you can't get your hands under there, they're gonna lock. And I think that's kind of the point of it. That way they're locking and they're sealing really well. Then you take your bubbler. Where is my bubbler? Shove that in here. Here's your 9.5 millimeter. EVA barrier, duotite connection tubes, whatever you want to call it. And you push them all the way in. They'll kind of click, you'll hear them. Same thing, you come over to the next one. Push that in. And that's it. You have a glycol compatible chilling system here. Now, of course, you're gonna need to buy some other stuff. It's your call on the 9.5 millimeter tubing. These quick disconnects I got off Amazon, I'll put them down, they were very reasonable. And yeah, pops right apart. They got a dual seal instead of a single. I've seen single, I've seen some bad reviews on the single seal, this is dual dual seal, if I can say it. Um, they will go into 9.5 millimeter. They will not go into this, so you have to have a tube in between here and here. You put a clamp, do another clamp, do another hose, and go on. I bought these on Amazon. I think I put them in my Amazon store. Yes, Bitter Reality Brewing Amazon store. I did blue for the cold going in and red for the not as cold coming out because it's really not warm. It's just not as cold. So yeah, this stuff is great. I did have to cut this in half to get it, the 9.5 millimeter tubing in it because it was so crinkled up. And I did have to spray it down with star sand. If I didn't spray the tubing with star sand, I would have never gotten it in. I mean, that hole was tight. So 